I showed you how to turn the original pattern into a pattern for this blouse. I was thinking what else to sew and came up with an idea of making a dress. Have a look at the sketch. The only thing which is different from the blouse is that the lower detail was made much longer. I'm wearing the tech dress now. I'll show it to you. Natalie is going to help me today. We will show you how to make facing, how to double the waistband and the collar. Ladies, when I say that I want us to be different and beautiful, I mean it. This is why I'm working that hard. I'm wearing the tech dress. As I've already said, the only thing which I changed in the blouse was the lower detail. I changed it for the skirt. I made the detail 40 cm longer. I haven't changed anything in it. I just made it longer. I think that many of you will make such dresses. The design is very interesting. The dress doesn't look simple. I recommend you making inseam pockets here. This is how the back looks like. This is a good example of a matching design. My waist measurement is 100 cm, but the dress makes me look much slimmer than I really am. There is a wrap over here. I remind you that I added 13 cm for the wrap over to each of the details. That makes 26 cm in total. Have a close look at the dress. I'm going to take it off next. Natalie will help me show you how to make a collar, how to double the waistband, how to make facing, and so on. I wanted to be able to make such complicated details without any problems. Some people say that cutting is the most important moment in sewing. I don't agree. Everything is important. It's not enough to cut the details accurately. You need to know the sewing techniques to be able to sew a high-quality garment. The ready-made patterns don't give you the same result. Cutting, designing, sewing techniques. Everything is important. You need to know how to edge the details, how to double them. Remember that practice makes perfect. We are going to show you some of the needed sewing techniques. I want you to be able to sew such dresses without problems. I wasn't planning to show you this dress, but I actually like it. Even the modeling fabric looks good enough. The dress is very comfortable. It's not too white or too tight. It's perfect for me. Next, I'm going to take the dress off. We will show you how to make facing, how to double the waistband and the collar, how to cut the interfacing material, and so on. Let's start working. We detach the collar from the dress. It's double. I can move it aside now, we'll get back to it later. Next, we need to remove the taking from the shoulders. The wrap over will be doubled with the whole piece facing detail. Anyway, first we need to double and stitch the waistband. When it's ready, we can move on to working with the facing details. We also need to make the details for doubling the waistband. There will be no interfacing material in them. Watch what we are doing. If you work the way we show you, you won't have any problems. We need to remove the taking from the shoulders. We also need to take the pin tucks. If we don't do it now, it will be problematic to do it later. Next, we need to detach the waistband. Cut the second layer for it and double the original one with the interfacing material. Do not forget to mark the wrong side in the waistband. This is very important. Notice that the darts and the pin tucks match perfectly. I remind you that I turned the blouse into the dress.
I'm sure that many of you will make such dresses for yourselves. I love the design. If you want to make the inseam pockets here, place them about 5 cm down from the waistband. We are not going to make the inseam pockets here. I've already showed you how to do it a lot of times. Watch the videos on how to do it if you haven't done it yet. Some of the details are pretty complicated, so we are showing you everything so thoroughly. These seams should be stitched and edged with an overlocker. We need to double the waistband with the interfacing material. I remind you that I had been making the blouse as a mock-up, but then I decided to turn it into a dress. When we detach the waistband, we'll show you what to do next. First, we need to double these waistband details with the interfacing material. When they are ironed and trimmed, we'll cut the second layer for the waistband. The details should be accurate. When I finish cutting the interfacing material, I'll attach it to the waistband. I love this dress. I think that it's very beautiful, even though the design is pretty simple. Every one of you can make such dresses for yourselves. Let's go to the ironing desk. We are attaching the interfacing material to the waistband. It should be done for the waistband to be strong, so that it's of the needed shape, and the seams are not seen through it. There will be no interfacing material in the second layer. Do not forget to make sure that the edges are perfect when the details are doubled. Do not ever think that an inaccurate detail would look good in a garment. It wouldn't. Moreover, it would spoil the whole view. The waistband is ready. Next, we need to double the bow with the interfacing material. We are using the interfacing material, which makes the details keep the needed shape, but doesn't make them too strong. Watch the way Natalie is ironing the details. Don't move the iron too fast. It's also very important that the direction of the moves shouldn't be different.
Do not forget to trim the edges after doubling the details. We are working with the color now. It should also be doubled with the interfacing material. These are the two color details. One of them is doubled and the other is not. I can move them aside. This is the waistband. It's also doubled. We need to cut the second layer for the waistband. We'll do it off the camera. We're not going to double the second layer. The bow is already doubled. It's ready for the stitching. These are the upper and the lower details of the dress. There will be a waistband inserted in between them. In the next video, we're going to stitch all the darts. Do not forget about the waist tucks on the back. We're also going to stitch the side and the center back seams. When the seams are stitched, they will be edged with a novel locker. We're also going to stitch and edge the side seams in the lower details of the front. I remind you that you can make the inseam pockets in the dress if you want to. We are not going to do it. I've already showed you how to make the inseam pockets. Watch the videos on how to do it if you haven't done it yet. These are the doubled waistband details. I need to lay them on the fabric in order to cut the second layer. These details are doubled with the interfacing material. Very nice. Natalie is teaching the darts off the camera. We'll show you the result. The waistband will consist of the two layers, one of which is doubled with the interfacing material. This is the front detail for the waistband. This is the center front seam. As I've already said, the waistband will consist of the two layers, one of which will be doubled with the interfacing material. Have a look at the waistband details. These are the front ones, and these are the back ones. I can move the waistband aside. Let's have a look at what Natalie is doing. She is teaching the dart and the center back seam. We are not going to stitch the side seams now. The back and the front details should be made separately. When all the details are ready, we'll stitch them together. The center back, the waist tucks,
We've edged the center back seam. We're ironing the upper detail of the back, the center back, the dart. We iron the upper detail of the back. We're going to stitch it to the waistband next. These are the upper detail of the back and the back detail of the waistband. Pin the notch in the center back in the waistband to the center back seam. This is the edge which should be stitched. Natalie, pin the details, please. Make sure that you make seams of an accurate width, otherwise you wouldn't make a high-quality garment. You can tag the details for stitching if you need to. Natalie is going to stitch the seam this way. The width of the seam is 1 cm. We've stitched the waistband to the upper detail of the back. Do not forget to cut the angles from the seams. It's very important to cut the extra details from the seams. If you don't do it, the seams will be too strong. Let's go to the ironing desk. Notice that Natalie is not taking the seam to the wrong side for ironing. You can do it if you need to. If you decide to make a more casual dress, you need to top stitch the seams. We are not going to do it now. I love the dress. As you can see, the pattern really is multifunctional. Next, we need to stitch the lower part of the dress to the waistband together with the upper detail of the back. Make a notch in the center back first. It should be done in order to pin the details accurately. We're stitching the lower part of the back to the waistband. When we finish stitching this seam, we'll have a look at the waistband in the back. The seam is ready. Let's go to the ironing desk. The back is almost ready. The both seams should be pressed close to the waistband. When Natalie finishes ironing the seams, we'll show them to you.
This is how the bag looks like from the wrong side. The bag is ready. Let's have a look at the right side. Next, we need to stitch the front details. I remind you that there are two darts on each side of the center front. The dart is stitched, so we can remove the taken. Next, we need to iron the dart. What is also very important is that you should double this edge with the interfacing material before cutting the facing. It should be doubled from the shoulder to the waistline. This edge was cut in a bias, so it should be doubled for the fabric not to stretch. We've ironed the dart and doubled the edge. Let's continue working. These are the right parts of the upper detail of the front and the front waistband. We need to stitch them to each other. The width of the seam is 1 cm. Next, we need to stitch the lower part of the front to the waistband. Natalie is cutting the extra pieces from the seams. Do not forget to do it. It should be done not only in the waistband, but in all the details. If you want the garment to be elegant, the seams should be soft. Let's go to the ironing desk. When the seams in the waistband are pressed close to it, it looks as if the waistband was stitched on top of the details. You know that it wasn't. These are the seams which make it look this way. The front is ready. We showed you the way we stitched the front and the back. This is how the front looks like from the wrong side. This is the back. This is the front. I also hold the front detail in my hands. These are the waistband details which were cut in order to hide the seams on the wrong side. The collar and the bow are also ready to be stitched. The front and the back are ready. Natalie has stitched the waistband and the collar off the camera. We'll show them to you. I'm going to cut the facing and the interfacing material for it. I'll show you what you should pay attention to when cutting the facing details. This is very important. Please be very attentive. 
As I've already said, I'm going to show you what you should pay attention to. I pinned the waistline to the piece of fabric. I'm going to cut the lower part of the facing on the grain. It will be pretty hard to cut the facing for the upper part, because we have already stitched the darts in it. I'm going to show you what to do. I remind you that I've pinned the waistline. It should always be done when cutting the facing. I wasn't planning to show you the sewing process that thoroughly, but I wanted to be able to sew such dresses without any problems. I've cut the lower part of the facing for the wrap over. Next, I need to cut the upper part. Be very attentive. The center front should be placed on the grain. These details should be absolutely flat. Notice that I had to move the lower part a bit for it. This is why the lower part should be cut first. It is the only way to cut the facing accurately. This is why it is so important to pin the waistline before you start cutting the facing. You need to do it in order not to make mistakes. I had cut the lower part of the facing first, and then I laid the upper detail for cutting. I need to make sure that the center front is placed on the grain. Notice how convenient it is to work with the spacing seams. This cut should be about 4 cm long. Next, I need to detach the front. Do not forget to mark the waist in the detail. It is sedated right in the middle of this detail. I can move the front aside. The facing for the wrap over is ready. I want the facing to be 12 cm wide in the lower part. 12, 12. This line should go up to the waistline. Here it is. As I've already said, the width of the face in here should be about 4 or 5 cm wide. This part should be drawn by hands. It can be straight or it can be slightly round. Don't make too tight facing details, they won't look good in this case. I need to pin the facing details for them to be accurate. I'm going to cut the interfacing material on their basis. The technique I've just showed you is very convenient. This is the best way to cut the facing details in the cases when the darts are stitched. Pin the waistline, draw the lower detail first, and then the upper one. The facing is ready. This is how it looks like. This piece of fabric can be moved aside. Next, we need to double the facing. I'm cutting the interfacing material. Natalie is going to double the details. After that, she'll edge them with a novel locker. The dress is pretty complicated, so we decided to show you most of the needed sewing techniques. When cutting the interfacing material for the facing, make sure that facing is placed on the fabric accurately. You can use a ruler as a guideline for cutting. Imagine how the front neckline is actually going to look like. 
Remember that you are the one in charge of cutting, not the fabric. Let's cut the facing for the back. I need to mark the wrong size in these details. They are ready, so I can move them aside. I need to lay the center back on the fold. I can start cutting now. I don't make patterns for the face and details when sewing such simple garments. I prefer to work right on fabric, cut along the back neckline and the shoulder. That's it. I can move the back aside. I remind you that this is the center back. I need to mark it. The facing should be 5 cm wide on the shoulder, just like in the front detail. I'll make it a bit wider here. Do not forget to make a notch on the center back. The facing for the back is ready. The facing for the front is also ready. Next, I need to cut the interfacing material for the back facing. The interfacing material should be cut in such way that the center back is on the grain. Make sure that the direction of the grain matches in the details. This is very important. Natalie is doubling the facing with the interfacing material. Do not forget to trim the edges when the details are doubled. I know that sometimes you get tired of sewing. You start to wonder if it is worth it. Think of the prices for the ready-made clothes. It helps. It makes the sewing process very enjoyable for you. I honestly think that this is the great advice. When I think of the way the ready-made clothes feed me, I realize that sewing is so fun. Natalie has doubled the facing. She is trimming the edges. When she finishes doing it, we'll show you the details which are already made. This is the back. This is how it looks like now. Let's have a look at the front details. This is how they look like. These are the doubled facing details for the front. They should be edged with a novel locker. This is the facing for the back. This is how it looks like. This is the color. Natalie has already stitched it. These are the bow details. This is the second layer for the waistband. It will be attached to the wrong side of the dress. These two details were cut on a bias. They are 3.5 cm wide. Natalie is going to make the bias binding of them. 
These are the details the dress is going to be made of. The front, the back, the waistband, the bow, the collar, the facing and the best binding. Be very attentive. We are going to iron the best binding next. When we do it, we'll move on to stitching the side seams. We are actually going to stitch the shoulder seams first. I'll explain why. Natalie is stitching the shoulder seams. The width of the seam is 1 cm. We've stitched the shoulder seams. Next, we need to stitch the shoulder seams in the facing details. I remind you that the facing details of the front and the back will be attached to each other with the shoulder seams. That's it. Let's go to the ironing desk. We are edging the facing with a novel locker. I remind you that we've already stitched the facing details for the front and the back. Due to this fact, we can edge them all with just one seam. It's very convenient to work this way. It won't be hard to attach the facing to the dress. We'll show you what to do. The facing details are ready. Let's move on to ironing the shoulder seams. Next, we need to edge the armholes. Have a look here. The shoulder seams are already stitched. We need to edge the armholes with the best binding next. We need to do it now for the best binding to be inserted in the side seams. Natalie cut the 3.5 cm wide stripes on the bias and iron them folded in half. Be very attentive. The width of the seam is 5 mm. Don't gather the fabric in the armholes and don't stretch the binding. You can stitch the side seam first and then edge the armholes. It just won't be that convenient. Next, we need to cut the extra details from the seams, top stitch the seams and iron them. We want to top stitch the seams in order to make them stronger. I want you to learn to work fast and easy. This is why I show you the most useful and convenient techniques.
Natalie is cutting the extra details from the seams. Cotton fabrics should always be top stitched. It's up to you whether to top stitch or not the other fabrics. As I've already said, cotton should be top stitched. We've cut the extra pieces from the seams for them to be softer. Let's go to the ironing desk. Be very attentive when ironing the bias binding. You can either iron it without any extensions or make a tiny 1mm one. I know that this technique is not widely used nowadays. We used to use it when I was learning to sew. That time is long gone. Modern fabrics, modern techniques. This is why I always say that we shouldn't stick to one and the same techniques and designs. Don't be afraid of experiments. We've tacked the best binding, so we need to top stitch it next. The first thumb hole is almost ready. We're going to stitch the second one off the camera. We're making the seam as wide as the foot is. The armholes are ready. I remind you that the bias binding will be stitched in the side seams. This is how the armholes look like now. We can start stitching the side seams. Natalie also made the bow details of the camera. Have a look here. This detail is just pinned to the edge. Notice that this edge of the bow matches the waistband perfectly. This is very important. The bow is attached to the very edge on the right side, and it's inserted in the side seam on the left side. You can see that we did some things off the camera. We inserted the bow here, stitched the side seam, and edged it with the novel locker. What should you do? When the armholes are ready, insert the bow in the left side seam, and then stitch the both side seams. We did it off the camera. It's not hard to do it. Do not forget to edge the seams with the novel locker when they are stitched. Natalie is stitching the waistband details, which will be attached to the wrong side. The side seams in the waistband should match the side seams in the main fabric. When Natalie finishes stitching the seams in the waistband, she'll press them open. It should be done for the seams to be soft. After that, we'll stitch the second layer of the waistband to the dress. We are going to stitch the upper edge first. Have a look here. This is where the facing ends. The waistband should be a bit longer. It should end about 4 cm beyond this mark. We'll show you what to do. 
This is how the dress looks like from the wrong side and from the right side. This is a bow inserted in the left side seam. The other detail of the bow is pinned to the very edge of the dress on the right side. Have a look at the dress once again. This is how it looks like from the right side. And from the wrong side. Natalie, please, measure and mark about 8 cm from the edge here. Do the same thing on the other side. This is where we should stop stitching the waistband. We'll pin the waistband to the center back first. As I've already said, first we need to pin the center back. Here it is. Have a close look here. In order to cover the seam with the waistband, the detail should be stitched very close to it. Because of the fact that the upper detail was inserted in the seam, we have to make notches here on each side of it. The notches should be tiny. We can pin the detail now. The upper edge of the waistband will be stitched, and the lower, sewn by hands. Have a close look at what Natalie is doing. You need to stitch the waistband as close to the side seam as possible. You won't be able to stitch the seam itself, so there is going to be a tiny opening here. You'll understand what to do when Natalie starts stitching. We will be stitching from the wrong side, because we need the seams to match. Today we are showing you how to stitch the waistband. In the next video, we are going to show you what to do with the facing. Make sure that you pin the details accurately. The seam will be stitched this way and then folded. This is why it's so important to stitch as close to the side seam as possible. We were planning to stitch the waistband to the front first, then to the back, and only after that stitch the details together. We realized that it was not the best thing to do. I know that the dress seems complicated, but actually it's not. If you do everything the way we show you, you won't have any problems. Let's start stitching. Natalie, what if we cut the extra piece of the waistband? This edge will be covered with the facing, so there is no need to make a long waistband. Let's start stitching. We are stitching the detail right in the first seam. This is very important. Make sure that the seams match. Start and stop stitching as close to the seam as possible. 
you wouldn't be able to stitch the seam itself this way. Have a close look at the way Natalie stitching the seam. Stitch as close to the seam as possible. Stop there and then start stitching right from the seam on the other side. We made the notches for us to be able to stitch the seam more conveniently. Have a look here. This is the part which wasn't stitched. It should be sewn by hands from the right side. After that, we'll move on to the ironing task. Have a close look at what Natalie is doing. The parts of the seam which were not stitched should be sewn by hands. This is the main detail of the waistband. The second layer was stitched on top of it. Next we need to fold it this way and iron. It should cover the seams. The waistband should be ironed this way. I'm glad that we decided to show you some of the needed sewing techniques. They are pretty complicated. We want you to be able to sew such amazing dresses for yourselves. I honestly think that the more complicated the design is, the more interesting it is to sew a garment. I'm tired of the boring, simple designs. The seam is ironed. Let's go back to the sewing machine. This is how the wrong side of the dress looks like now. Next, Natalie is going to fold the lower edge of the waistband this way. And then sew it by hands. Have a close look here. There is no stitching on the right side in this point, so we need to sew the detail by hands. Natalie, let's sew a small piece here. It would be enough. We'll sew the rest of the seam off the camera. This is how the lower edge of the waistband is going to look like. This part will be covered with the facing. Just imagine how beautiful these details will be. You can iron the edge before sewing it. We're taking it. Now 
Natalie is sewing the lower edge of the waistband by hands. The length of the stitches is about 3 mm. The seam should be pretty strong. Make sure that you don't pierce the fabric through. Please be very accurate and attentive. As I've already said, the length of the stitches is about 3 mm. The fact that you are sewing the detail by hand doesn't mean that it shouldn't be strong and accurate. We're going to sew the whole edge this way. We'll do it off the camera. I'm sure that you managed to make such dresses after watching these videos. Have a look here. We've already sewn the part of the waistband. The rest of it will be sewn off the camera. I remind you that the upper edge of the waistband should be stitched, and the lower sewn by hands. This part will be covered with the facing. We want you to be able to sew such amazing dresses for yourselves. The techniques are pretty complicated, so we are showing you what to do very thoroughly. We've stitched the side seams off the camera, because I'm sure that you managed to do it without any problems. This is how the dress looks like from the right side. Have a close look at the waistband. I remind you that there are the pin tucks both on the front and on the back. If you don't want to make the pin tucks, you can make a gathered skirt instead. I love the way they look like. This is how the waistband looks like from the wrong side. We've covered the seams with the second layer. I remind you that the second layer wasn't doubled with the interfacing material. Notice that the second layer of the waistband is stitched not to the very edge. I'll cut these threads. This part will be covered with the facing. This is what I'm going to show you today. I'm also going to show you how to insert the collar. This is how the facing looks like now. I remind you that we've stitched the facing details together. There are the shoulder seams in the facing detail. It's very convenient to work when all the details are prepared in advance. Have a look here. One of the bow details is pinned to the very edge of the wrap over. And the second one is already inserted in the side seam. We did it when we were stitching the side seam. This is why it is so important for the bow to be of the same width as the waistband. If you make it wider, it won't look good. Next, we need to insert the collar in the dress and stitch the facing. First, we need to pin the center back of the collar to the center back of the dress. Pin the details first, and then check if they are even.
Is everything okay? Perfect. Natalie is going to tuck the collar. We need to do it in order to be able to attach the face inaccurately. In the previous video, we showed you how to double the facing with the interfacing material and how to edge it with the novel locker. It should be pinned to the dress accurately. Pin the center back first and then the shoulder seams. The angle in the facing should be pinned to the waistline. Natalie pinned the angle. I remind you that it marks the waistline. This is the facing for the back neckline. Make sure that the shoulder seams in the facing and the dress match. The center back should also match in the details. Be very accurate and attentive when pinning the facing. I remind you that we are pinning the facing to the main fabric. We've pinned the face into the dress. The collar is pinned in between them. They will be stitched together with just one seam. I want you to have a look at the bottom of the facing. There are a lot of different ways for edging the bottom of the garments. We could cut a white facing and stitch it here. In this case, the bottom would be strong and beautiful. This is the best thing to do. We are not going to do it now. We are going to overcast the bottom for about one centimeter. I remind you that we are making a mock-up. The facing can't be overcast. In order for it to be at the same length as the bottom of the dress, we need to make sure that these details are flat and then draw a line here, one centimeter up from the bottom. We are trying to show you the most simple techniques. Natalie is teaching the facing at the bottom of the wrap over. We are stitching the facing for the wrap over. I remind you that this angle is placed on the waistline. When you reach this point, turn the detail. Learn to stitch the details without taking them. It takes some time not only to take the details, but also to remove the taking. We've reached the collar. Continue stitching as if there is just one detail instead of two. The width of the seam is 7 mm.
Be very attentive when stitching the shoulder seams. We've almost reached the center back. That means that the first half of the facing is already stitched. We'll stitch the second half of the camera. Do not forget to cut the extra pieces from the seams when you finish stitching. Do not forget about the shoulder seams. Next, we need to top stitch the seam. It should be stitched close to the facing. We are top stitching the seam in order to make it stronger. Don't try to get right in the angle. It's impossible. Start stitching as close to the angle as you can. The width of the seam is one millimeter. The seam should be top stitched this way from the beginning to the end. Stop stitching about 1.5 cm away from the angle. You won't be able to get any closer to it. Next, we need to turn the angles right side out and then go to the ironing desk. Do the same thing with the second angle. Notice that Natalie is ironing the seam without taking it. You can take it if you need to. It's not hard to iron the seam if it's top stitched. When Natalie finishes ironing, she'll make the bar tags. Natalie, show us the way the waistband looks like from the right side, please. We can continue ironing the facing for the wrap over. I remind you that we top stitch the seam. Due to this fact, it's very easy to iron the facing. The second side will be ironed the same way. Next, we need to make a couple of bar tags. We are going to show you how to do it. When the second side is ready, we'll move on to taking the bottom. I remind you that the second layer of the waistband was stitched not to the very edge of the wrap over. 
We need to make a couple of bar tags on the facing. Natalie is making the first bar tag on the waistband. Make sure that you don't pierce the fabric through. Natalie says that this detail is not white, so she can sew it by hand. One more buttock should be made on the center back. We are making the bar tags for the facing not to turn to the right side. Next, we need to make a couple of bar tags on the other side, on the shoulder seam, on the waistband. The bar decks are ready. This is how the face looks like now. We made the bar decks on the waist, on the shoulder seams, and on the center back. Make sure that you don't piece the fabric through when making the bar decks. The only thing left for us to do is to take the dress bottom. The width of the overcast should be one centimeter. You can make a wider overcast, or you can edge the bottom with the facing. We decided to use the most simple way for edging the bottom. Natalie is going to take the bottom this way circle-wise. When she finishes taking, we'll stitch the bottom from one facing to the other. I am wearing the finished dress. Natalie has already stitched the overcast at the bottom. It's one centimeter wide. You can make it as wide as you want. Have a look at the bow. There is a tiny button on the wrong side of the wrap over. It was attached for the wrap over to be stronger when I'm wearing the dress. The dress is very comfortable. The armholes fit me perfectly. We showed you the making of this dress very thoroughly. I remind you that it was made of the pattern for the garment with the drop shoulders. I wanted to understand that I show you the most simple techniques. Some of my video courses will be available very soon. In the video courses, I show you more complicated techniques, the ones which allow us sewing the high quality garments. In the everyday videos, I show you the most simple techniques, like the one for sewing the collar and the facing with just one seam. Such techniques are perfect for sewing simple garments. I'm sure that many of you will make such dresses for yourselves. Have a look at the way the dress fits me. I remind you that my waist measurement is 100 cm.
This dress makes me look much slimmer than I really am. The wrap over is pretty wide, so I can move in this dress without any problems. I'm glad that I had the chance to show it to you. That's all for today. We are Pauk Irina and Natalie. Subscribe to my channel, write comments, share videos, press the like and the bell buttons. Remember that practice makes perfect. I would really appreciate your support. Thank you. Goodbye.